Hi everybody, I wanted to talk a little bit today about how you can use some of Visio's built-in features and how you can do some custom work yourself to create uh, a solution that might help you to create some mechanical drawings or say a configuration tool that takes the form of a Visio drawing. So let's just jump right in and talk about what I've cobbled together today. First thing we've got is a scale drawing. You'll notice that there's a scale shape here. This is actually has a, a smart text field. You can see I can't actually you know, it kind of jumps over some of the characters. That that's because this field is inserted that it extracts the scale information from the drawing. So we're working in a one sixteenth scale. You can also see up here this drawing is in inches: zero, ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, one seventy. That'd be a rather large piece of paper if we weren't working in a scale. So anyway, what we're going to do today is put together a bunch of fictitious, so piping-ish components and I want to show you some of the features that Visio has that allows you to do this a little bit more easily. I put this whole thing together in about two hours and uh, that includes some VBA macro programming at the end. So the first thing we want to do is talk about some custom shapes I built and we'll just start with say a fitting here. And if I zoom in you'll see that it's a pretty simple thing. You know you could you could resize it and stretch it. It doesn't do anything uh, particularly ingenious but you know it's a couple of rectangles, some lines, and some corner rounding, and it's just grouped together, really nice and easily easy to use. And you could create this to match the size of a real world object. You can see down here we've got a width of 25 inches, a height of 30 inches. If we double click on this, we could change the width and height. Actually, we don't have to double click; just single click to bring up the size and position window. And you could actually type in real world values for something like this. So very quickly, you can make objects that represent your real-world parts list. So the next thing is we need to assemble something that looks like this on the right. I just put this over here to remind myself what I want to do. So eh, maybe want to bring down a, a, a generic pipe. And what's interesting here is we can we can just glue it here because of a, a little develop developer feature that I implemented. Uh, if you use flowcharts, you might be familiar with connection points, and if I click on the X tool, you can see that these shapes have little connection points. But with a, a little bit of developer training, you can there's a way to actually make them such that they snap together and follow each other around. Now it's a one-way link, so you have to remember who the who the first shape was, so to speak. But uh, this makes it a lot easier to position shapes accurately and you can actually turn off the grid. You don't need that to help you snap anymore. And we don't even need the ruler either. So if we have shapes that are enabled with the snapping behavior, that can save us a lot of time in assembling something and also make it actually easier and more possible to, to properly align things. So uh, one other thing I wanted to show you about this pipe is that it's got some smart behavior in it and that you can see this uh, washer, or whatever you want to call it, uh, flange down at the bottom, it doesn't stretch with the, the pipe because it's it's kind of an end treatment. It's, it's a piece of equipment at the end of this pipe that shouldn't actually stretch. Only the pipe does. And you can get a little bit, so that's smart shape behavior, what I'm talking about here. Another thing you might notice is if we zoom in a little bit, there's an alignment box. And since the diameter of the pipe is the most important thing, the shape is actually built to chiefly show the, the diameter of the pipe and then the other bits are just extraneous and extend past the alignment box of the shape. So that can be useful for, for various reasons. Uh, it's easier just to control the width of the shape if you're using, say, the size and position box to, to, to set the diameter. Another thing that figures in with smart shape behavior is we've got this standard pipe and you can't really move it like this. You can change its diameter. I left that open. But what we've got is in the shape data window some standard length. So we can choose 40 inches, 50 inches, and sure enough down here you can see it's 50 inches high. It's also, this is also enabled via right click or with this little action tag here. So this shape is, this is a good way to make sure that equipment on your drawing matches available parts in the real world. So let's just put it back to 30 inches. We'll stick that down here. Let's see, we'll bring in the multi-valve and you'll say, oh, oops, somebody drew this one horizontally. Now I could rotate it and put it over there, but that's that's not so exciting because I talked about the connection points earlier. And this one, let's go back and just show them. 
has connection points on the ends where they belong. And what you can see is as we drag this over here, these connection points, not only do they do this magic gluing together stuff, but they also orient the shape properly. So we can see that we've, we've got a little bug here, but like I said, I created these quickly. So that'd be something someone would have to fix, but again, that's really, really handy is to kind of enforce you know, real world behavior in your diagram without too much extra work. Now this shape's a little bit smarter too in that it can be either a, it says multi-valve over in the, in the document stencil, so what does multi mean? That means it can be either a manual or a mot motor valve just by clicking this. So this can eliminate a lot of the the uh, symbol overload for your, your the people using your drawing solution. Instead of having 6,000 different symbols, a lot of shapes can be combined as into multi-shapes so that they can people can quickly configure a class of shape once they've dropped it on the page. So we'll move on. Let's see, we'll put another piece of pipe down here. We can rotate that around and you can see that the both ends of the pipe work. And maybe we'll just put a cap on it at the end just to... to, to, to uh, top it off. And uh, you remember we started at the top, you can see those are all glued together there, so you can just move the thing in one fell swoop. So that's pretty interesting. Now some people, especially if they're doing something more like configuration instead of mechanical drawing, they might want this to look a little bit more snazzy. So this is a single line drawing, a uh, single black and white, it's not a single line drawing, but it's just black and white outlines. You might want to format this a little bit more. So I just did some basic visual formatting. You see here's a rectangle. Go to the fill dialog, take the fill options, pick a pattern. Let's see, we gotta do this one and flip the colors. Well let's just do light to dark, like that. That's all there is to that, and a couple of different patterns to get things to happen. You can see we made the handle a nice red. I'll switch back to the pointer tool here. So you can see that the handle on the multivalve is red, but when we switch to the motor it turns green. And again, this is a, this is a little bit advanced visual development to, to make this happen, but once you know how to do it, you can create a shape like this in just a few minutes to an hour. So there we go, we've got that like that. It, this is much nicer looking. Zoom out, you can see. So if you want a kind of a more pictorial view of your system, uh, some quick formatting will take you a long way. The next thing you might want to do is dimension the shape. And I've Visio comes with a couple of stencils that are really useful for dimensioning. And I'll show you what those are. If you go to More Shapes in Visio Extras, there's two that stand out. There's Annotations and there's Dimensioning. Now there's several flavors of each one of these, but since I'm using 8.5 by 11 paper on, and inches, I'll use Dimensioning Engineering, US Units, and you can see those are, those are open over here, and there's a whole slew of dimensioning shapes there. On the annotation stencil, there's a lot of callouts and some ruled columns and all sorts of symbols, including the drawing scale shape that I put over here that I talked about earlier. And once you drop these shapes into your document, they actually show up in the document stencil. As you can see here, I've got a vertical and a horizontal dimension line, as well as that drawing scale, and then all the parts I built for the system. So I, I prefer to put the shapes in the document stencil because the document stencil travels with the drawing and then you only have to distribute one file instead of one drawing plus several stencils. So anyway, the dimensions are very easy to use. We'll drop this one out here. And this one is a vertical dimension, so no matter what you do with the endpoints, it stays vertically oriented and you can always grab this little yellow handle and move the uh, the leader lines. So you'll notice that the dimension does actually change. So we've got a so 22 inches. If we check down in the size and position, you'll see the length of this is indeed 22 inches. So now it's just a matter of snapping to the shapes. Now those connection points come in handy because we can get right to them like that. But you might not want the the leader lines to go all the way to the center and obscure the uh, the actual geometry of the shapes you're drawing. So you can actually snap to points, and in this case, let's see where we want to go like that. You can see that there's a little bit of spacing left here to keep the thing off the, to keep the leader line from actually touching the uh, 
object. So that gets you a little bit better, and Visio does have good snapping to vertices. Where it gets a little bit tricky is on the curved bits here, because you have to go in a little bit further. But eventually there's a point that shows up. You can see that goes like that. We'll go down to here, and then pull this over here. And if it gets really small, these shapes are smart enough to have the dimensions jump out. First the uh, first the arrows jump out, then the actual text jumps out, and if you don't like where that is, you can pull it around like that. All sorts of things you can do with these dimension lines. Now, the, the very last thing to do after uh, using the built-in shapes, creating your own custom shapes, is to maybe write a little bit of custom code to save the time of doing all this stuff manually. Now I've used uh, the Visual Basic for Applications, or VBA that's built right into Visio, just like it is in Word and Excel, and I've written a couple of pages of code that are connected to this button right here. You can see there's a button there, I can actually push it. But you can just as well create stuff and uh, create add-ins in .NET using C Sharp or VB.NET and other languages, and that's the full .NET library is available to you. You've got a uh, more modern languages with more sophisticated support for everything you need to do in a complex uh, solution, but uh, it does require the compilation and the install and a lot of setup and deployment uh, effort that VBA doesn't require. And if you just want to learn Visio, VBA is great because you type a couple of lines and immediately see a result. You just you just push the run button and off it goes. <laughs> in fact, if I hit, uh, I don't actually know the how to how to get to VBA from a menu. I think it's down here, somewhere, maybe under developer toolbar, Visual Basic. Up it comes. You can see I've got three classes here. Let's see, there's hardly any, uh, there's nothing in there like that. And two, and then the button right here, command dimension click, just calls this little bit of code, which calls this little bit of code, and makes things happen. So what am I talking about? If we have a shape selected, and we click on this button, then it automatically dimensions it. Now this is canned to a little, to a certain extent, it's just, it's just finding the, the extents of the shape. It's not going to go in and find uh, actual bits of geometry and do things like that. But e if, if nothing else, it actually gets you, uh, it gives you a good start so that you can tweak it by hand. And you don't have to do everything by hand. So we can do shift select for all these shapes, or we can just drag a net around them. And we can say dimension the selection. And voila, we get all the dimensions for all the shapes all neatly aligned off to the left. Now the code does know that this is a vertical stack and it has some assumptions about that. If we were to do a, do a horizontal uh, illustration, this code wouldn't know how to do it, so you'd have to do some more programming to figure that out. But this isn't, pr this isn't bad to start with. Also you'll notice it's, it's looking for the widest part, so this shape down here is kind of throwing it off. So we'd want to do something more like this maybe to show the dimensions. But there you have it. Uh, I think it's a pretty nifty solution. Um, I hope it shows you the, p the possibilities of what Visio can do. And remember, there's a combination of using the built-in dimension lines, quickly drawing some shapes yourself, learning a little bit of development to create these, these orienting connection points so that shapes snap and align to each other. And uh, finally, once you get good at it, going a little bit crazy with Visual Basic and really saving yourself a lot of time with some fancy automation. So if this is the kind of thing you're interested in, if you need something else for your company, uh, don't hesitate to contact me. Just head over to my website, visguy.com, uh, affectionately known as Visio Guy. And once you're there, just go to the Hire Me link, and there's some information about what we do. And down at the bottom, there's a handy contact form. So give me a little description of what you're looking for and maybe which version of Visio you're using and any other helpful information that will allow me to respond in an intelligent manner. So there you have it, mechanical drawing and configuration in Visio. Thanks for watching.